Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're about to finish up our Strengths and Materials 2 section, and we're going to finish it up with columns, okay? So I've, I've written out a, a question here for us to solve together, and it's a fairly simple column question, something you can expect on the exam. There's a, there's a bunch of different steps and numbers here, and I know it looks confusing, but we'll, we'll try and go over it in the most simple way possible so that you can understand. All right, so, Columns, as we all know, are supportive devices that, that hold a load, okay? And there's a, a critical load, depending on the, the properties of the, of the column, and generally it relies on you know, the, the moment of inertia or the shape of the column and the length of it and that, the ratio of those two, that will cause it to buckle, okay? And you can look up buckling, I'm not gonna explain it, but essentially what happens is, is columns buckle under some critical load all right, and that's called, we'll, we'll call that the cri critical or the compressive buckling load, okay? So we call that the Euler compressive buckling load or the, the critical buckling load, okay? And what that is, is that's the maximum load that we can apply axi axially on the beam before the beam fails due to buckling, okay? And so what we have here, a picture here, we have a cross section and we have two, what's called an angle, okay? That's a little L-shaped beam there. We have two angles and they, as you can see, they've been bolted together. And the first part of the question, actually we're gonna assume that they're, they're not bolted, that they're just acting independently. And then in the second part of the question, we're going to assume that it just forms a singular beam. And we have to approach both of those a little bit differently. Okay, so we're given in the question that this, this column here is four meters long and it's pin-pin, okay? It's a pin-pin connection. So I'm gonna draw down here. Okay, we have a little picture and we have Okay, we have our two pin connections and we have our column here. Okay, so if you look at your book, all right, I'm not gonna write all these down, but you have uh, different effective lengths of columns, okay? So in this case, because it's pin pin, and this is just a rule that you have to memorize, this won't usually be given to you. Okay, this is four meters long, this is the length of our column, and this is just the cross section of the column. So we're looking at it cross sectionally, okay? So this is the length, and for a pin pin column, okay, are the length or the effective length is equal to just the length, okay? So we're not going to change anything. Uh, for pin connect, for sorry, for pin fixed, uh, for fixed free is going to change the effective length that we're going to use in the question. But for this question, okay, our effective length is just equal to the length because it's pin pin, okay? Pin ended. All right, so we're working with, like I said before, 2L127 by 76 by 12.7 millimeter structural steel angles, okay? And, right, so what we're going to do in any question of, of this sort is we're going to go to the tables in the back of our textbook, okay? So I've skipped that step and I've just gone ahead and written the information down that we need, okay? And for the most part, in, in the test, the, the teacher will give you the pertinent information that you need, okay? But you can go ahead by, you know, practicing going to the table and finding the information that you need from the table, just in case your professor gives you the table during the test and you have to take this information out but all you need to do is go to the angle section look for this uh, particular angle and then you just need to write down the data that it gives you so that's what i've done here so we're given our e our yield stress both of our moment of inertias in the x and the y axis the area the radius the minimum radius of gyration okay we'll go over that in a sec and the xc value which is essentially our X bar or our distance uh, fr from here to the Y neutral axis, okay? So that's going to be our XC. So how do we begin this question? Well, first of all, we need to find our minimum moment of inertia, okay? So you have to remember that in columns, okay, the weaker axis is always gonna be the one to buckle first, okay? And as we've discussed before, the moment of inertia is a uh, shape or cross sections resistance to bending. Okay, so the one that has the lower resistance to bending, the lowest I, okay, that axis is gonna buckle first, all right? And, okay, so solving for the first part of the question, uh, we, we, we wanna find the compressive buckling load or the critical compressive bu buckling load if the angles act independently of each other. So we're going to assume that we just have two separate angles and they're just two pieces, okay? So we can use directly then the information give us, given to us on the table and at the end we can just multiply by two, okay? So let's begin. 
So we need to find first our minimum moment of inertia, okay? So we're going to use that, the, the formula here for the radius of gyration, okay? Which is, okay, so the square of the radius of gyration is equal to the minimum moment of inertia divided by the area, okay? So we can rearrange that and we can solve for the moment of inertia, the minimum that we need to solve the problem, okay? So what's our, R's, what's our R value? Well, our R value is given in the table and that's going to be 16.5, okay? That's squared and we're also given the area, okay? Which is 2,420 millimeters squared, okay? And if we just throw that into our calculator, we're going to get a moment of inertia of 658,845 millimeters to the fourth, okay? So we need now to solve for Euler's buckling load or the critical buckling load. And I'm just gonna write the formula down for you here. And we're gonna call that P critical, okay? The load, the critical load is equal to pi squared times E times I over L squared, okay? And this is L prime squared, that's the effective length, but as we discussed before, because it's pin pin, the effective length is the length, so this is just gonna end up being four meters, okay? So, let's begin by plugging in. All right, we have all this information, it's given to us in the table, all we need to do is just plug in the values and get started. So in most of these problems, you'll find that the trickiest part is going to be finding the I value at the start and using the right I value. That's pretty much it. After that, we're just plugging into the equation. Okay, so we're given this equation. Let's start by plugging in. So we have our E value, which is 200 GPA. Okay, so we're going to turn that into PA. All right, we're going to work with meters in this, uh, in this question. So that's times 10 to the 9. So we have our moment of inertia here, right? which is in millimeters to the fourth, okay? So let's go ahead and convert that to meters to the fourth, okay? Eight, four, five times 10 to the negative 12, okay? Let's make a box here so we don't get confused. Over, all right, that's times 10 to the negative 12. And we have our length, all right, which is four meters. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in. That's going to be squared and that is going to give us our critical buckling load, which is going to be 81,281.744 newtons, okay? So we've arrived at the critical buckling load, right? Now, that is just the critical buckling load for a single angle, okay? Because we used the data that's given for us here, okay? This data here in this table, I'll just give that a box so we can see, is the data for a single angle, okay? And this is what is actually given in the table, this little cross section here, okay? But what we have is we have two angles, right? Working independently of each other, but as a, as a system, okay? And we want to measure our, our, our column, which is two independent angles, okay? So we found the critical buckling load for a single angle. What we need to do now is just go ahead and multiply that by two, okay? And we're going to find the critical buckling load for our cross section or for our column, okay? So uh, just put that in your calculator. You should get, okay. 162,563. Newtons, all right, so that's the critical buckling load. That's the maximum load we can apply actually on the column uh, before it fails due to buckling. And that's the first part of the question. Come back for the second one and we'll see what happens when we rivet the angles together and how much load we can apply. Thanks for watching.